how are you? I'm good. How are you? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. How's your day going? It's good. It's good. Started off with the workout this morning, ran some errands, and now I'm on with you, so it's perfect. How are Yay. you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So for the people that don't know, I have a series on my IGTV called Beyond the Face, and it's all about bringing women that I think are inspiring, that I think are beautiful, not only outside and their face, but going beyond and deeper and sharing their story that many people don't know. And I thought that you were an amazing guest to be a part of it because everybody sees your company growing and your name growing and all these beautiful people that you have around you and that you get to work with, but they don't really know you to the level that I feel like I've been able to see you grow in. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I have to have her on. So thank you so much for being here. Oh my here. God. No, I'm so honored and sorry. I don't look as cute as you. <laughs> no, but again, it's beyond the face, right? This is yeah. Sunday attire. Woke up, did a workout with my daughter, had some breakfast. So, um, and I realized I just have a sports bra under and I didn't have a cute shirt to put on because my husband took my clothes that I had prepared. So uh -huh. we're just, you know, the Nike sweater today and this is yeah. typical everyday look for me. So thank you for having me on. I'm so honored. Um, it's also been amazing just to see your growth. And, and I think just being so genuine in the industry, I think that that's something that sometimes... I feel like in living in LA or California, we tend to like lose sight of like what's really important because LA is moving, moving, moving. Everyone's like trying to make money and hustle, which there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, what's so I think important for me is like family and being true to myself and being true to my daughter and having family time. And you know, I think that it's so great that you're doing this because there does need to be a little bit more awareness than what people think they see, or like you said, they might know just based on social media, it might look like I have the perfect life, or, you know, I was handed this business, or whatever people might think, and it's really so far-fetched, it was nothing like that, so I'm so honored to be here yeah. to share that with you today. So for those that maybe don't follow you because they're looking at you from my page, or those that started following you, or only have been following you, honestly, in the last six months to a year, I don't know if you remember this, but, um, I remember you, I was telling my friends, because they were like, so who are you talking to today? And I'm like, yeah. I used to be her, like, spray model. Like, yeah. Four years ago, mm -hmm. five years ago. Yeah. And I'm like, and it's crazy to think that not only the story that you told me when I went to your Glendale yeah. pop-up, that everybody was telling you, no, it's not going to work. Right. But your entire journey thus far, you know, because... In LA, obviously, a lot of people do spray tanning and things of yep. that sort. But I would love for you to tell us a little bit about how you started. Why did you choose spray tanning? Like, what about it out of everything? You could have done lashes. You could have done brows. You could have done nails. Yep. But you chose spray tan. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about how you started and how that came Yeah, about. so I think it all, you know, I truly feel like anything in life that's supposed to find you will find you. It's like so crazy to think that, but it's so true, right? Sometimes we try new things or we're like, hey, I'm going to do this and it doesn't work out. And at least you tried, right? And so for me, just a little bit background about myself is um, my Abbott twin sister and myself, we were in foster care taken away from our family at the age of seven. Um, we remember everything. We had a very traumatic childhood um the first seven years of our life and then obviously dcfs came in and they took us away and then we we're put into foster care um at the age together thank gosh because she's literally my ride or die twin sister five minutes apart complete opposites but she was meant to be obviously i couldn't have lived life without her but anyways, we were adopted at the age of 11 by Hispanic family. So I actually speak Spanish fluently. I can read it. I can write it. Um, so part of, you know, my heart still, like, I make the best pozole and all that stuff. People would ever never think that just looking at this face, you know, right beyond right. the face. There's so much more. Um, you know, I it's kind of a sad story. It wasn't the perfect family that we it was supposed to be for us i remember like asking myself like god how did you give me two sets of parents and family that pretty much failed my sister and i and unfortunately even in our foster home we went through a lot of abuse and um a lot of things that shouldn't have happened happened to us even in the system um that's why i'm an advocate now for other foster kids um with our little foundation that we started 
But anyways, just to try and back to how I ended up spray tanning, um, at the age of 17, um, I left my foster home or adopted home. And I left with a backpack, um, working two jobs as a janitor, um, working at Jack in a Box at the time. And I rented a room in a stranger's house for $300. Um, had no one to call, no one, like I didn't have, we didn't have family. Um, my sister and I went to go look for our real family. We found um, our aunt and our biological dad. And our biological dad kind of just was going through his stuff still, was never able to get out of um, addiction problems and stuff like that. So that didn't turn out well. So I um, started running this amazing room. And I remember just walking into this room thinking, oh, my gosh, this is mine. But to me, that little room just meant so much to me. I felt free um, for once in my life. I felt like I was going to be able to breathe because I think – for the first 17 years of my life, it was about surviving and right. being strong. And you kind of don't know where you find the strength sometimes. It's just so crazy to me that I'm like, how did I, I look back now and I'm like, how the heck did I get through some of the stuff that we went through? And hopefully one day I'll be able to write a book to talk about more freely and openly some of the stuff that we suffered from. But anyhow, I do know that that was a part of my journey and, um, you know, started working for LA's Best after school program right after high school. It was one of the best opportunities um, and that's for um, under underfunded schools in the Los Angeles area and it's a free after school program for kids. And so I started working there as a dance coach and I did that for about a year. Um, but that I feel like that job really like set me up for success because I was quickly promoted to a coordinator. So I was now I had 10 staff that I was responsible for and 200 kids under me. Um, and I did that for four and a half years. So that taught me leadership, being a business owner, because it, it's pretty much like I was running the entire, you know, after school program. And it, I think, showed, you know, a lot about myself, how to talk to people, all that stuff. Um, but at the same time, right after high school, I started going to therapy, which I feel like that had a huge part of my growth. Of all the uh, therapy. As, yes. And for mental health, I mean, um, you know, going through 17 years of trauma pretty much is what we, my sister and I went through. Um, we definitely needed to talk to someone because I don't know how I would have made it to this far in my business or my career without that therapy. So I um, started seeing a therapist. I went to the same therapist. I still occasionally pop in here and there for 12 years straight. So sometimes I would go three times a week. Sometimes I would go two times a week. And I would just go and cry and cry and cry just to kind of talk about the trauma and how do I deal with it. I'm so scared all the time. I'm so nervous. I have so much anxiety. I'm always on edge. You know, why did this happen to me? I'm trying to get all these questions answered. Right. And so along with therapy, along with this amazing job that I got, I think it just, again, showed me so much about how to talk to people, how to build a business, how to be kind to people. Um, and obviously just working with LA's Best, it's a lot of these um, children are kind of like myself, right? They either, parents are just barely making it, barely cutting it. Um, foster kids, a lot of these kids are in the after school program. So I think for me, it kind of gave, it was like a way of me like giving back and helping other kids that were kind of probably in the same boat. I met several families during that process or during that job that were in that same need. Um, but anyhow, you know, started working at LA's Best, went through therapy, the amazing, most amazing therapist in my life, just literally, um, showed me so much about myself uh, showing me showed me so much about myself mm -hmm. um and just helped me just it i just felt like this calming and this peace in my life and it was it's i knew i needed to keep going keep going and i did um and then i ended up in health insurance um just so random i got this another amazing job i just felt like at that point god just kept blessing me like the blessings kept coming right. the growth was coming and i wasn't even at that at that point i thought it was the best job in the world but I remember a few months into it, I was like, you know, I met my husband. I had my, you know, pr a year after that, I had my daughter. I have a six-year-old daughter. Um, my husband and I met at 21. We've been married almost 10 years now. So to have, you know, it's very rare, right, even in L.A. or to be. So I've been with him 12 years, married for almost 10. 
Mm -hmm. Um, so him and I, you know, started to build this journey together with our lives and, you know, I was working a full-time job and I remember thinking like, there's so much more, I don't want to work for someone, you know, you kind of go through that. I was, and I just kept praying and praying and praying. And I was like, God, there has to be something more for me out there. Give me a sign. I like to do this. I like to do that. I can't go to cosmetology school. What can I do that I don't need a license? And I remember one day I had only gotten two spray tans in my life. I woke up one day and I remember thinking, is there a spray tan artist and like my whole group of friends? I'm like, none of my friends have like a spray tan artist that they go to. And I'm like, I can start with them first. I'm like, what a random thought. I remember going to my twin sister. She's so funny. And I would say, hey, Britt, I'm going to start spray tanning. She's like, that's the craziest idea. Yeah, that's probably what we're talking about. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm going to do it. So I used the only money that I, my husband and I had left. We had just gotten our house. And I went to this training. Um, that I thought at that point was going to be like the best, but it actually was a setback in the beginning because it wasn't what I expected. I didn't learn much from it. And so I really had to learn through trial and error and, um, through that trial and error. And I think through my entire journey of being a survivor and a hustler and just like figuring where there's a will, there's a way. And trust me, when you go through some of the stuff that I went through, like you figure it out. Like there, you don't take no for an answer. And I think that's a part, like without my journey, there's no way I think my career, my business, my family would be where it's at today. Um, and I developed my solution and one step just kept leading to the other. It was funny, just last week I was in a meeting with someone and they go, what's your business plan for 2022? And I'm like, God's plan. <laughs> and he's like, no, for real. I'm like, for real. I'm like, that's really, I just let God's guidance and just that movement it's so crazy to think but truly that's the only reason why i feel like i've been able to get this far is just having faith and believing in myself and believing that there's a purpose for me and it could be i can't tell you the amount of times that i've been in front of clients from just you name it a to z and they're like you were meant to be in my house tonight and i'm like they're like i just can you pray with me can you like manifest like it's just crazy how God has also used me in these places and moments with certain people and clients that that little thing, that prayer, if I thought it was supposed to be a 20 minutes free tan, I'm staying with someone two hours and I'm just praying and they're crying with me. And, you know, so I feel like God also uses me now in these interesting ways and puts me in front of clients that maybe just needed someone fresh and completely unbiased. Obviously I'm going to be unbiased. I've been through, I like, there's nothing about me that's judgmental and that's because I think I was judged so much growing up and till this day I remember um, my husband's family telling um, him I she you shouldn't get married with her because she was went through a lot of stuff as a child and your marriage is really gonna suffer so even family have gotten into our relationship and thought because of my past that I would not be able to have a successful marriage right because a lot of the time society tells you that if somebody has a troubled past that they're like broken that they're damaged that they're disposable right you know right. and i think that um to bring it back like i definitely think you said something about always having to figure it out and find a will in a way and mm -hmm. i i don't come from a foster home i you know but i do have a lot of things that taught me um i had a rough upbringing to a certain yeah. extent um and i think that i it's it's a thing that when you just have to figure out you have to figure it out and yeah. whether it's this that generation or other kind of people they're always like how do you always figure it out yeah like that's probably at least for myself that's my best trait is that i'm very resourceful yeah. and i'm just like i always just had to figure it out like yeah. You know, and, and it doesn't, there's no mold of this is the person that looks like this way that can figure it out. Like we've had to go through a lot of things to be able to figure it out. And I think with you, what really has always touched me and kind of has brought me to you is that I would have never known that you were a foster child. Right. And I love connecting with people that have a connection to, you know, the foster situation mm -hmm. and all that stuff, because it really is, to me, it's like, how do I say how do I explain this it's a lot of the times people give up on them yeah it's and true. I they wasn't a, yeah and I wasn't a foster person but I felt give, given up on a lot growing up and so I had to believe in myself so yeah. I kind of relate to that 
in a lot of the essence and it's so crazy because people think if you're a foster child if you're a child from abuse if you're a child from traumatic situations you must be dark you must be anti-love but yeah. you're more than or they think you're just not like they already it's crazy because they already gave up on you like they yeah. already think you, like my or my husband's family again going back to that like now I can't tell you the amount of texts, calls. We're so proud of you. We're so proud of you. I'm like, hey, but weren't you the one saying that my husband shouldn't marry me because yeah. of my childhood and because of my trauma that I went through? I'm like, I pulled through. Like, yeah. I could have been a statistic. And so that's why, like, you know, through we just started. Um, it's called Me and Me Foundation. My friend, Sav, dearest friend of mine. We started this foundation for foster kids. That, you know, every year we, we're, we're building it up so there's more to come. But that's my way of, you know, giving back to these other kids and just, like, listening to them. And I feel yeah. like n people don't want to take the time anymore to, like, stop and tell them, like, you're going to be okay. Like, guess yeah. what? I went through this and you're not the first person, but guess what? Like, if I can come this far, like, I'll do everything I can to support you. And I think that's so import important for me is, like, grow my brand, Dolce Glow, to be able to give back and help other foster youth and other kids that are going through this. It might not be foster kids. It might be people that are just in, you know, their parents are barely making it. They can't afford, you know, a new pair of pants or shoes. Or It could be the, sm it doesn't have to be that. They could have all the love at home. But if I can, if my company at some point we can grow as much as like I dream and I pray we do and we're on track to do that, that I can be that person and I'm only one, but with my group of friends and people around me that I could definitely get back to, you know, all that stuff around. And I think too, another really, really key important thing is also breaking the stigma of therapy because mm -hmm. I feel that when it comes to me, the reason why I'm so open to love and uh, a lot of people say that I have this, like, um, not innocence, but youthful, mm -hmm. like, energy when I'm around them. And everybody always thinks I'm younger than what I actually am. Right. And, they're, and I'm like, is it because of my looks? They're like, yeah, you look young, but it's also something inside of you. And I truly, truly believe that, at least for me, it's therapy. Therapy has made me be, since I've done therapy since I was probably, like, 12 years old. And um, it has made me become emotionally aware. It has made me be able to understand the feelings, even if there are a thousand of them. Yep. And when I go to schools and I talk to people, uh, I talk to students and I tell them, I said, listen, you could have a mom, you could be in a single mom home in an efficiency. You can be a foster child right now. You can be yeah. living with your aunt because your parents died. It does not mean that you can't be a doctor. It does not mean you can't be a president. Yeah. It does not mean you can't be anything you want to be because of your financial, because of your race, right. because of anything. And I think that, you know, it's so instilled um, in school and in society that you have to look a certain way. So when people hear my story, they're like, there's no way you went through X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And you look like this. There's no way that all this happened to you in your childhood and you're so cute and pretty and pink and makeup. Yeah. And I'm like, right. you have no idea how many yeah. women are business women yeah. that are business owners that are succeeding and have not had the perfect lifestyle growing yeah. up that haven't yeah. gone even some of them are in their late 30s early 40s and their 20s were horrific right so yeah. for me it's like you know hearing sharing your story and thank you so much for sharing it because it's something so personal that i'm pretty sure 90 80 percent of people of your followers didn't even know that you know no, and, it, it, it gives them an that, yeah and i appreciate you so much for obviously for being on letting me be on with you because i want to share it more i don't think i have and i feel like as i that my business and brand is growing this is you know a great opportunity to put a face with a name but the like it's like where what is Dolce Glow? You know who's the face behind it? Like you hear all these self tanning brands in general, and you can't connect a face to a brand. And I feel like with Dolce, you was like, oh my god, it's that girl Isabel. But who really is Isabel? Does she just get handed a lot of cash? No, I literally hustled until this day. I'm working till two a.m. up at six a.m. with my daughter, getting her ready, running the business during the day, spray tanning at night, um, and I 
truly feel like that hustle just makes you appreciate things so much more. And I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, like four or five years ago, come in and be my spray tan model. And now it's like, you know, I'm able to work with some of the most influential people across the world. And I'm so yeah. grateful and so humble. So how, how did that happen? Like, you don't have to share who the name of the person was, but yeah. your first A-list client, how did that call come about? And, you know, obviously that catapulted you to more of, yeah. you know, we obviously know that you are the go-to person for the Kardashian family, yeah. J-Lo, for so many people. But that first client that you got, where were you? What was happening that day? So it was right before Coachella. It had to have been five years ago. So I had tanned, um, actually, Ariel, Kylie's makeup artist. Um, and I had reached out to him through a random, you know, DM. And that's how I have built most of my business has been, you know, by me reaching out to people. I'm just, I'm like, oh, well, they say no. At least I try. But what if they say yes, right? It's that hustler in us that you're like, where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm like, I want to be the best, do the best. And it's funny because manifestation has had a huge part to deal with my career, my family, my success. When I first started tanning, I remember driving home and my husband called me and he's like, where, where are we eating for dinner? And I would say, oh, we're not going to dinner. Kim Kardashian's going to call me for a spray tan tonight. I would make myself believe it before it was even happening. Like I would speak it into existence, but I was making myself believe that it was happening. And I would tell myself, I'm the best. I work with the best. I'm going to be the best. I'm going to provide the best products. And I would say it all the time. And so I reached out to one of the makeup artists. I was like, at least, you know, he's in front of so many people. Maybe he might refer me to someone. And so I tanned him right before going to Coachella. And um, Kylie saw my tan on um, him and said, oh, my gosh, who tanned you? And then before you know it, um, I got a call. And I remember just screaming up and down. So Kylie was actually my first um, A-list celebrity that I worked with. And I remember after the first time I tanned her, I never heard back. And I was like, it's okay. You know, maybe something, you know, she didn't like it. Obviously, with tanning, sometimes it takes a few times to get that formula right. That could, so I didn't take it. Um, I wasn't offended. But I was like, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And then a year later, um, one of the sisters called me. And I remember screaming up and down. And again, it was a referral. And just meeting so many people. I always say network. You just never know who you're sitting next to on an airplane or yeah. at a restaurant, at the bar, whatever it is. So I'm always talking to people. And then one thing led to another. Um, and it's just crazy to look back. And I was just talking to one of my clients about this. I'm like, it's just so surreal. They're like, I'm standing in front of you. Like, you're someone that I was so inspired by, you know, growing up and just looking at you now and, and like, to be a part of your glam squad in a small, itty-bitty way. You can have a hundred, you know, there's so many other tan artists to choose from, but you choose me. And I'm like, I just think about this. And what I'm going to share right now is very, very personal. But I want to share because I do think it's going to give people more insight as to what that trauma looked like for me. Um as a child so one of the biggest things is I have a huge thing with hunger so anytime my daughter says mom I'm hungry I freak out I go I'm like get her food get her food because my sister and I before we were put into foster care we had to eat dog food for many years I remember eating dog food from just that yellow pedigree bag I'll never forget it raw meat from the fridge I almost died of a bleeding ulcer at the age of seven from malnourishment that's when we we're taken away so I look back and I'm like how I look at that little girl, the one that was just thriving to find food, and, and I, we literally ate dog food. And that was the only source of food that we had for means until someone figured out, hey, these kids are just really sick. And I look back, and I'm like, now I'm tanning the biggest, ama most amazing people in the world. To me, they are. They're incredible people, the people I work with. And to think that I've come this far, I can only wait, to, you know, five years from now what it could be like and now to be a mom to my daughter and just give her all the love and that's why I only have one because my biological mom had five daughters and they're all adopted in different areas and so one for me I just feel like I can give her all the love and everything she needs and provide a really good childhood and not have to worry about not being able to provide because that is a little bit of some PTSD that I have. Of course yeah no that's understandable and and thank you for sharing that and I think that you know, I, I think you're able to share it this way because, one, it's a part of your healing. 
it's a part of your healing and it's a part of somebody else's healing. It could be somebody in Dubai. It could be somebody in India. You know, this is something that I love about social media that you can actually reach more people than you could ever yeah. imagine. And if it's like if anybody ever has a doubt why your business and why your career is going this way is literally because mm -hmm. that journey mm -hmm. is a testament that that situation that God, the universe, for whatever reason, right. you were placed to go through it and, you know, yeah. enough to be a voice for it. Not only are you going to fix the system, yeah. but you're now a person filled with so much love that's yeah. going to receive so much love. And that's in financial that's in yeah. people that's in the love around the people around yeah. you that are going to love you and and i'll never forget when i walked into your glendale pop-up and i was like oh my god you were like doing five million things at the same time while being on a live yeah. and i was yeah. like this girl yeah she does not I, stop and i just I don't know any other way i feel like you know just leaving with that backpack from my foster yeah. home not but, knowing but even, what i was gonna eat next but even when you did the Glendale pop-up, you did it as a risk because they were telling yeah. you they didn't believe. Yeah, yep. And exactly. look at you now. You're inside yeah. stores. And you, yeah. you took a chance on yourself. And I think more than anything, like, when you just have that gut feeling that this is your calling yeah. for whatever reason, I don't care if people say it's just spray tanning. It's yeah, just exactly. Tanning. No, it's deeper than spray tanning. It is, it's, yeah. It's such, like... This spray tanning business that you have is going to put you on a stage for you to be able to touch so many people. Not to be able to touch the people that look like you, that look like myself, that have other ethnicities, that have other body shapes, other body types, and just feel like there's no way that me that looks this way, that went through all this, can do it. And that they can. Yeah. Because yeah. look at it right there, you know? And I, I'm, I truly, it's just, I'm so again, honored to be on. And you're actually, I think, one of the first that I've actually, I've talked about it here and there through some posts, but I've never really gone on like a live or a podcast to like share more. And that's something that I want to do more to yeah. hopefully help other people and inspire others. And like, if I could do it, you can do it. And to be able to be on these huge platforms and use my following or whatever it is, or people, other tan artists that I've been able to train or whatever it is, not just in tanning, um, and by the way, the reason why I love tanning so much is to, you know, it's, it's the way it makes you feel right. So I'm talking about my journey and how I went through crazy traumas, but the way a spray tan or a self tan makes you feel and it, you can literally keep your same color and do the most natural glow. People think, um, there's so much misconception with tanning that you have to go to an extreme dark or why do people do this? But little do people know a spray tan just is like an immediate confidence booster it makes you feel like you have a filter it hides a cellulite makes you look 30 percent thinner again you can stick with your same color and just do like a glow yeah. on yeah exactly and so that's one of the reasons why i love tanning because of the way it makes you feel within and like we know like if we put ourselves together we put a little makeup on we're like on top of the world so like adding that on our body i feel like it just really helps can change your whole week you 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 get a tan you're like oh my god it feels so much better and so i just think all of this together again going back to my journey and everything i was meant to be here this well, was what percent. if it wasn't meant for me i would not you know my business would not continue the growth and success and now as we're in talks with just some amazing opportunities i'm like how and why but i'm like this is how it's supposed to be and now people are like because you've built the business this far like people now are willing to take a chance on me because i was able to take a chance on myself What's and that? i still do i'm not scared of anything like i don't get scared anymore i think because i was just i have to be strong i have to be strong i'm gonna get through it i'm gonna survive i'm gonna get through this but i don't fear anything i care nothing about money I really don't. What comes in goes out. As long as my family has food, I can shop and get go grocery shopping and fill up the fridge for me. That's truly all I care about. And I feel like there's just staying humble throughout my career, just throughout life and being a good person, giving back. That's like everything to me and everything else is just like a little perk at this time. So yeah, I'm so proud of you. I'm Thank honestly you. so proud of you. Like, Everything that you've done thus far, every time you've taken a, a leap of faith, whether it was to 
go and manufacture your product and mm -hmm. not just have it for your girls and for the people right. you were teaching because that's what you were doing for quite some yep. time. You right. were just only giving the solution to the girls right. who were doing classes yeah. too. Mm -hmm. And then it's you so crazy that you remember that. You're so Yeah, right. I remember going to the little place in Glendale yeah. in yeah. the back in the alley yeah. and getting yeah. spray can and there yeah. were women coming from Utah, yeah. from Phoenix, all around the world because they wanted to be spray tanned and yeah. learn the technique that you had and you were like the technique is here in this yeah. little bottle that I mix yeah. myself yeah. exactly and, you know, to be able to manufacture it is obviously a, mm -hmm. a step of faith right and then to then go and do the Glendale pop-up for as long as you did it's a step of faith after you know you told me yeah. you walked into a room and asked for investors and they what was it that yeah. they told you yeah they said that they so initially when we're um, getting ready to launch our self tanners and I had my plan I presented to them and I was like, we need X amount of money. I can't do this on my own. And they were, we went through five or six calls. And at the end, they're like, you know, we don't think it's a good fit. We feel like you're too small of a company. Like you're not going to be able to pull this off and we're going to have to do all the work for you. And I was like, you know what? That was, that fueled me like no other. So my husband and I launched Dolce Glow, all the self tanners, a pop-up. We funded everything ourselves with all my hard work. Spray tanning, the packaging, the PR. I mean, we literally did everything ourselves. And believe it or not, the week after I launched, they called me back and said, Isabel, we've been watching your stories. You did everything times 20 more than what we could have ever even thought. I was like, that's what happens with me. You tell me that, that I can't do something. I'm like, let me show you because I, that's just, it's like stuck in me. Like where there's a will, there's a way. And with God's faith, and I truly feel like with my God by my side, um, and true, and just honestly being a good person, it it attracts more. And now it's like now people want to meet with me. Now they're like, hey, you know, do you, is there any opportunities to work with Dolce? I'm like, it's just so funny how the tables turn now. But right. you know what? It's it shows that by myself and with my husband and my dearest friends and family, people that believe in me like yourself. And to have that support, it's, you know, it's just going up from here. So I'm super excited about that. And you stay true to yourself. You stay true. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have rebranded to get somebody else to be more enticed. You could have yeah. switched your model or made it easier to be able to purchase the, you know, the solution yeah. with chemi harsh chemicals in right. it. But you know, it'll be easier to make. Yeah, exactly. So you stuck through it all entirely. So yeah. So proud of you. Thank you Thank so you. much for sharing so much with us. I'm like, oh, I just I wish I could hug you through the phone right now. <laughs> but Thank I hope you so that much. everybody that saw this, whether it's a little clip or not, you're gonna be able to see it on my IGTV. Make sure you guys follow Isabel and you know continue. And you if you're watching from my page, make sure to follow this amazing, beautiful girl for allowing me to share my story. But you're so beautiful inside and out. And I think your energy just radiates through the camera. And um, I feel the same way. I just want to go and hug you. But you're just always such a beautiful person. I feel like we just if the world was a little nicer, it would be such an better place and so at least you know those that are watching that took the time out of their day to you know jump on and listen to this I hope that both of us were able to inspire one of you guys today and push you to do something that maybe you guys have been wanting to do but you're scared just go out and do it worst they can say is say no and at least you can say you tried but I bet you chances are they're gonna you're gonna be able to kill yeah us. and I think with everything it's also remembering that consistency is key a lot of people you know you got to put in the work. It's not yeah, you, you. You think because of, of it didn't happen in one month, it didn't happen in six months. I used to tell this to a friend of mine that had released uh, an apparel line, and she was like, I'm not getting the same amount of numbers that X person released, and they released you last year. And I said, yourself. I, yeah, don't compare yourself, because that company could have a, five years of lifetime, while yours mm -hmm. can have 500. Yep, but you're just not exactly. seeing it now, you know? Um, yep. So I think that there's no age wrong to start. Yeah. And just give yourself grace. I think grace yeah. is something really important because... And I always say the hardest part is taking the first step. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest part. And then once you're in it, like, everything's going to fall into place. But, you you know, I feel like if you don't try it, you'll never know. Um, but you have to put in the time. When people... I say this all the time. When you say no, someone else is going to say yes. So yeah. when someone's calling me at 12 a.m., 
A-list or whoever it is for a spray tan, if I can do it, guess what? I've Ubered to clients' houses at 1 a.m. because I can't get behind the wheel and drive because I'm waking up and I'm exhausted. So I get in that car and I Uber there. Or sometimes my husband and daughter, my husband gets up at 3 a.m. in the morning to go to work. He's driving me around till 1 a.m. in the morning with my daughter in the back seat. Clients would never know that my daughter is waiting in the car and my husband's waiting in there and you know we're it's like a family thing but it's like we continue to put in that time and it's a it truly is a family thing at this point where i go they go but these are the sacrifices that no one would know that i do behind the scenes and my daughter's in the car my husband's has to be up in two hours but he's driving driving me around at night because he doesn't want me to drive by myself so you have to put in the time you have to work hard um everything also fall into place but it really you, does. Have to, okay. you have to you know a lot of the times we're so scared so we accept whatever mediocrity we're currently in and and we'll complain about it and feel so stuck and we only feel stuck because we don't see five months ahead a year ahead of if we just take that step what will happen right and other people are like yeah but what if i take the step and nothing happens <clears throat> But if you never take that step, you're never going to know. No. So it's like, you know, it's like, are you either going to take that step and risk it all and see what happens if I put consistency for five months for a year, you know, of this that actually brings me joy and brings me passion and I actually feel like I'm doing it for a reason. Yeah. Or are you going to continue in this job that maybe not even pays you your full rent? You're right. struggling, you're paying pay ch paycheck to paycheck wondering when something else better is going to come but something else better is here telling you hey i'm here just take the step and trust me yeah. and do the work you, you know to. so yeah. i'm so grateful you have nothing to lose life is so short life is so mm -hmm. short enjoy it be kind help others work hard um stay true to yourself stay true to your family don't for you know sometimes in la we can get so caught up and lost in all this stuff and we just forget about what's important and for me it was listening to christmas music with my daughter yesterday so i'm saying it might be a little too early but for me that's what made us happy we're all singing in the car so you know love live life and enjoy it and be a good person and everything else will just follow yes well thank you so much i can't wait to see oh, you in thank person you. and i will thank have this you. on my tv you for you guys to re-watch it for you Save it to i want to share it too Yes, I, I will. Think you can do collab now, right? Yeah. Mm hmm So yeah, I, I don't know if it's open for somebody. IGTV, but I'll check. I'll um, check like, oh, that would be something intro. cool. But send it to yeah. me. I would love to share. Okay, perfect. Have a good day. Bye, love. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>